I met a man a few years ago, um, and he has become a good friend, and our connection is our love for history. I say I love history. He has a passion far greater than mine for history, and he has spent a lifetime collecting all of the artifacts. He's a guy that literally, I can call him up about almost any topic, and he'll say, oh, you know what? I have that, or I have a piece of that, or I spoke to Kennedy's secretary, and I asked her to write down what she knew before the assassination. He is an incredible man who has collected what I think is one of the largest personal collections of American and world history, least that I know of, uh, and it's all personal, one piece at a time since he was a little boy. There's a new book called Show and Tell, A Unique Journey Through History from the Life of Brent Ashworth. Brent is the little boy that started collecting, and wow, you won't believe what it has turned into. Hello, Brent, how are you? Hi, Glenn. How are you doing? I'm very good. Um, I'm so excited about this book. This is something that you have been working on for a lifetime. We went in with our cameras and, and we started photographing some of the amazing items. And now they're in this now they're in this book. But this is a small slice of of what you have. Um, yes. Let's let's start at what is the one thing that you you can't believe that you are the steward of at this point. Well, I, I think I've got some letters from our founding fathers of our nation. This is President's Day when we're taping. Um, that uh, are very meaningful, uh, particularly one from George Washington, in which he's responding to uh, one of his chaplains, Dr. John Rogers, the Episcopal Bishop of New York. Um, right after they received news that Fat George, our king, was not going to hire any more Germans to come fight us, and praising Washington. He says, your names could be known throughout all our history. They're building roads and towns, and even naming uh, states and territories, and even children after you. And uh, General Washington responded uh, by saying, I accept with much pleasure your kind congratulations on the happy event of peace with the establishment of our liberties and independence. But I hope in the midst of our joys we shall not forget that to divine providence is to be ascribed the glory and the praise. Yeah, this was a great man. That's that's just one among many. Um, there are you've developed personal relationships with people. For instance, um, Helen Keller is a hero of yours, and yeah. um, and you're passionate about her, and you have collected amazing letters uh, from her. Do you, do, yeah. you, do you develop a personal relationship with a lot of the people that you collect? Well, I try to. Uh, of course, many of the people I collect are, are gone, I passed yeah. on, but I try to get as close to them as I can. Um, when Evelyn Lincoln was alive, uh, she helped me uh, get a hold of some John F. Kennedy material. Which I that, can, you, can you explain the letter that you asked her to write? Because it, it's, it's a stunning piece of history. Well, yes, one of, the, one of the letters that she wrote had to do with uh, uh, just a few days before the assassination. And she was, re she was responding to a uh, Jim Bishop. Uh, you may remember Jim. He wrote Day in the Life of President Nixon and President Kennedy and um, uh, President Lincoln um, and, uh, and others. Uh, and he compared after the assassination the uh, similar things that had happened during uh, and after the assassination of Lincoln to uh, Kennedy, and among those, he talked about Kennedy uh, having a, uh, a secretary named Lincoln, Lincoln having one named Kennedy, who warned them to stay away from the theater or from Dallas. And mm -hmm. so he wrote, uh, he wrote a letter to, uh, um, to uh, Evelyn Lincoln uh, asking about that, and she responded. And uh, in the letter, she talked about her husband, who incidentally was named Abe, <laughs> Abe wow. Lincoln, uh, who was, uh, was eating at Trader Vic's on Capitol Hill just a few days before uh, Kennedy had his uh, Texas trip with Lyndon and so on, and uh, overheard a conversation in another booth from a couple of men who were claiming there was going to be an assassination of the president on the 23rd of November of 63. And uh, when he heard that, he immediately got on the phone with his wife, who's the, uh, Evelyn Lincoln was the private secretary of uh, President Kennedy. She'd been a private secretary since the Senate days. And he got a hold of her and he said, uh, 
Evelyn, you've got to go in and warn the president. And so in this letter, she said that she went in and she uh, warned the president about what her husband, uh, Abe Lincoln, had overheard about the assassination um, uh, the following week during his Texas trip. And uh, he sa she said President Kennedy looked up and said, Ms. Lincoln, if I were to worry about every crackpot that wanted to take a shot at me, they could do it in church. Mm. So he went to Dallas, said in her letter. Um, Brent, your faith plays a big role, your LDS is a my, um, and it's played a big role, and you have been at the center of, of one of the bigger controversies um, in the LDS faith in the last probably 50 years. It was a group of letters um, that were purported to be absolutely real. They fooled you, they fooled many really big scholars. Um, and they were letters apparently um, with Joseph Smith talking about how he talked to salamanders, which seemed insane, but when they were tested, they proved to be real. It ended up being a scam. You've told me some of this story. I I'd like to focus on when it started to be unraveled um, by a university, I believe in San Diego, um, they saw that this man had really, was very clever in tricking the, the dating process, um, but then he tried to cover his tracks, and you were one of the men that he tried to kill. You, if it wasn't for divine intervention, you would have been blown up. Well, I, I believe that's probably true, uh, although I don't know for sure if I was his third target, the chief of police in Salt Lake, Bud Willoughby at the time thought I was and others. Uh, but uh, irregardless, uh, this would be a good time to give credit to the Lord for both my collecting and my protection at that time. The uh, the salamander letter that you refer to was offered to me by Mark uh, Hoffman. Uh, he was the, uh, the forger, as it turned out, and uh, was a murderer, as it turned out, but uh, bombed two people, murdered two people with bombs. They were the first bombing deaths, incidentally, in Utah history. So they brought in uh, ATF, FBI, Secret Service, everybody, along with the, the local police on it. Um, yeah, that letter, the, uh, the Salamander letter, was quite interesting. Because it was a supposed letter written by Martin Harris, one of the three witnesses to the uh, Book of Mormon, uh, written by him. And there's no handwriting of Martin Harris except a, a few uh, tiny signatures. I have one authentic one. In fact, I have the earliest one known, 1825, which is a very unimportant document signed. He's... Uh, <laughs> it's on a bond paying for a, uh, a relative to get out of, out of uh, pay his bail, hmm. get out of uh, prison uh, there. And, um, but this was, that's uh, the kind of thing that uh, the Hoffman used to uh, copy are things that we didn't have any handwriting of yeah. before for obvious reasons. He and um, the, uh, the letter was supposedly written to W.W. W. Phelps, a close confidant of uh, the prophet Joseph Smith. And it gave uh, more of a, uh, of a black magic beginning to Mormonism yeah. uh, than, than we'd ever heard of before. And, and I don't want to get into anything personal, but you were with the leaders of the church, and they even said, I, uh, we can't explain this, but we, we've we checked it out, right, Brent? We've all checked it out. We did, yeah. Uh, president Hinckley at the time, uh, later president of the church, uh, was, uh, was over the historical area of the church, and I, I had quite a long... Uh, a relationship with him. Uh, he was a, a marvelous man who uh, yeah. had a great love of history yeah. um, and, uh, and shared, uh, shared that with me often. But uh, yes, they were, uh, they were also fooled as the rest of us were at the time. It's interesting as I go back over President Hinckley's comments though at conference and in uh, the uh, publications that referred to some of the Hoffman things that he said, usually he said, should this prove to be authentic? I think that's interesting as we look at it going back, because hmm. obviously uh, they, they didn't. You the um, uh, you you downplayed. I I encourage anybody uh, to actually look at what happened. He um, missed a lunch appointment because his wife said, "I don't feel good about it. I don't think you should go. Stay here and have lunch at home." And um, police tracked him with video, and um, uh, and he my wife tried to save my. <laughs> yeah, he, your wife saved your life along with the Lord, and, and it, 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 just tell the part where he, he leaves, where he was going to blow Brent up, we think, 
uh, and he actually blew himself up in the parking lot. How did that happen? Well, he had, uh, we usually would meet on uh, Wednesday afternoon about 2.30 uh, at a bookstore in Salt Lake. It was at a mall that's now gone. And uh, we would meet there at our spot, as we called it. And we'd wait for one another, being a bookstore, we had something to read. Uh, and uh, evidently, uh, because I didn't go up, my wife convinced me not to go up. Hmm. Clearly saved my, wife, my life that day. Uh, he bought a 50-cent Wall Street Journal, which you normally don't get a, a receipt for. And time dating was just coming in in 85. And in his pocket, uh, after he blew up, less than eight minutes later, according to the time dated receipt, uh, he had a receipt for this Wall Street Journal. And uh, so we know he was at our spot at the time we would have met, but didn't because I didn't show up that day. Uh, and uh, had just enough time to walk back to what is the conference center now, Desiree Jim at the time, and get himself blown up by his, uh, his third his device. Um, Brent, any idea how many items you have of history? Total items? Well, I think we're over a million items now, Glenn. Uh, this includes... Uh, books, uh, manuscripts, uh, artifacts of all kinds. You, I mean, you have you have Amelia Earhart's goggles and jacket. You have, uh, yeah. I mean, it, you you have amazing uh -huh. pieces. I I bought Tokyo Rose microphone from you. Um, you did. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's 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 amazing a, how vast your collection week, is. That was a week call my due to my yeah. wife saying. <laughs> And a broadcaster and a friend like Glenn Beck. Uh, yeah, his, and you won't part with any of them. What are you going to do? I mean, you know, you're not <laughs> 20 anymore. Where, what do you? What well, is your hope? Well, my hope is that uh, we can get something going, either you and I, Glenn, or somewhere else uh, to to, uh, to house these things. I uh, I got them so that, that, that they can be used uh, to kind of counteract uh, the lack of uh, teaching of, uh, yeah. uh, of God's role in American history and in other things in the schools today. Yeah. Because these letters prove uh, that uh, the good Lord did have a, a hand in creating our yeah. country, creating our Constitution, uh, and, uh, and uh, the, the, uh, the other things that the Founding Fathers did. He had a very direct role in play. And uh, maybe I should mention the, the author was Tracy Felstead, who did a wonderful job on this. And, and you wrote the, uh, the introduction. Which yeah, is, uh, which it's a, she, did a, she did a great job. This is a great book, yeah. full of pictures. The Life of Brent Ashworth, a show and tell, tells a little bit about his life and then the collection uh, that he has, and it is truly remarkable. It's well, I would just correct one thing you said, and that is it's the collection my wife, Charlene, and I have. And uh, she, without her, this would have been impossible, without my wife. I have to tell you, she has the patience of Job. She has <laughs> the patience of Job. God bless, Brent. Thank you so much. Thanks, my friend.